Okay, so this is the uh, tutorial that's going to go along with your black square problem. In this one, I'm going to show you how you're going to use Google Draw um, and how to use all the tools to complete this assignment. The main things you're going to be learning in this tutorial or that you need to think about for this is Stroke or in, in, in Illustrator, it's called Stroke and Google Draw, it's called Border Color. Um, and rotating your squares, resizing them, overlapping them, and alignment. So that's what I'm going to be showing you in this tutorial. All right, first things first, we need to set up our composition space. So you're doing three solutions to each word. So you need to set up three spaces where you're going to have your problem solved. So we need to have our first composition space. And we'll do that by making our first square and that's holding the shift key down. So there's one. Now uh, we change it to white. Just bear with me. This will make sense in a minute. And let's make sure it has a black border, which it does. Now, instead of doing that over again, I'm just going to do control C, control V and V again, because we need to have three for each word. I'm going to line these up. Okay, so these are going to be my three spaces that I'm going to have for, let's say, I'll pick the word border first. Now we can start making the black squares that we need that are going to go into each of these three for our different pictures. So I can just copy and paste that one. This is going to be my first black square, so I need to make it black. And it's up there in fill color. Make it black. And we can keep the border black right now until we figure out what we want to do with that. So I'm going to resize this so that it fits into this first thing right here. I'm going to do an order aligning these perfectly horizontal to show order. So let's resize it. And how you resize a shape you hover down here in the corner, just like with Illustrator, and you drag and pull. Now, unless you hold the Shift key, you're going to lose your square shape. So if you hold the Shift key, you let go of the Shift key last, you'll keep your square. Here's my first one. Now I'm going to need four, so I'm just going to do a Control C, Control V, Control C, V, and V again. Now I have my four black squares. So this is my first composition for my word bold for the first answer I have for this problem. So if I just arrange these, do you see that red line happening? That lets me know they're in alignment. And that could talk about order. But what I want to do, I think this talks more about tension. So what I want to do is put these up and down inside this white square in a horizontal way. So first I need to do is make them all smaller. I can do this all at the same time. You click on one square, hold the shift key, click the next one, then the next one, then the next one. Now they're all selected at once. You get a bounding box around it, hover around the corner here, and begin to resize. Again, if you don't hold the shift key, you're going to lose your square shape. So you hold that shift key and it snaps it the same and let go. Now I have four smaller squares that are all going to fit in there. So I said I wanted them to go horizontal across in one line. So let's grab the first one. I'm going to get it generally in the right way that I want it to go. Remember, we're talking about order here. So you can do this um, and let the red line happen, and that'll get them all in order. Or let's say you have one off a little bit, which actually right there would talk about playful. But we're talking about order right now. So you can use the align tool in this. It's similar to Illustrator. And again, that's click on one square. We're going to have to select them all. So you hold the shift key, click the next and the next and the next. Go up to arrange, go to align and you hit center. 
or you can try a line to the left. This can all possibly talk about order depending on how you want to solve that problem. Some of them might not work. I'm getting all off here. So this is an interesting solution. This is nice and balanced, talks about order. There's only one square, but there's not. There's four and they're all on top of each other. So let's say this is my first solution to order. Now I can shift click on all of these, copy and paste, put it into my next one. Now I need to come up with a different solution for this. So maybe I want to put them all going up and down. No, you cannot copy my solutions here to this. All right, now I just got to do the third one. So that's a shift click. Control C and Control V. There are my three solutions to order. This one is slightly off, doesn't really talk about order. So I just nudged it with the arrow key and there we go. So one thing I want you to look at, this would not be workable for order because these are overlapping right here. You want things to be nice and precise when you're talking about the word order. This goes back to the lecture where you have to really think about what the word means. Watch how the red lines are happening as to how it snaps them in place. So with that, I showed you how to set up your squares and resize them. Next, I'm going to show you how to rotate and overlap. So the rotate would be a really good thing to use for maybe the word playful because you can make them go in all sorts of different directions. So how you rotate, you click on your square and I zoomed in with that control alt plus. You get this bounding box and that little uh, dot up there in the top Hover your cursor over and you'll get a crosshair. Let that happen. Click and hold and drag and it will rotate your square. So I've rotated these other ones to kind of sort of make it look like these boxes are jumping up in an arc to talk about playful. Another thing that might work for playful is to possibly overlap them um, to create more variety. So to show overlap, obviously you're going to resize some of these. So that's clicking on the square, hovering in the corner, holding your shift key so you don't lose your uh, square shape. So I've got one bigger. Now I want this one to look like it's overlapping that one. Right now it kind of does, but it doesn't because they're just blending in together to make a new shape, which could potentially work for something else but I specifically want this square to look like it's overlapping it. So first thing we need to do is to make sure that square is on top of the bigger square. So select it, go to arrange, order, bring to front. All right now we know it's on top but it still doesn't look like it because it's just blending with that square. So this is where you could use changing the stroke to white or the border colors it's called in uh, Google Draw. So that's up here. Just a reminder as to where that's at and we make it white. Now it looks like it's laying on top of that. You do have the option in this project to possibly change the weight of that stroke which could really add some interest in any of these problems you're trying to solve. You can even make it so large that it almost looks like you've made a completely different shape. Um, you are also allowed to add a dash to it. So that might work for playful also. Any of these 
different kind of settings you can use in your stroke, which can help solve your problems a little bit more. All right, so in this I'm gonna show you another little trick that might talk about the word increase. I've made my four black squares here, gave them white borders, and they're all overlapping each other. So what I'm gonna do, obviously it still kind of looks like increase here, which could still be another um, solution to your problem, but I want them to all align perfectly in the center so it looks like you're looking down on top of a stack of blocks. So what I'm gonna do is use the align tool. So I click that square, shift click that one, shift click that small one in the center, go to arrange, align, and center. And then just use the arrow tool to nudge it so it looks like it's more in the, the center of the larger black square. This is a good possible solution. As you can see, it even doesn't even look like the four black squares separate anymore. It looks like a completely different thing, like a pattern, and that's fine. It's all how you arrange these squares. Use the stroke, the rotate, resize, overlap, and the align tool. One final thing I wanted to tell you before I show you how you're going to turn this in. Um, I know I said I, you can't copy my solutions, um, but all you need to do is slightly change it so it doesn't look exactly like the ones I've done in here. So you could just simply uh, maybe make this one a little bit bigger so that it's um, more even with the rest of them. So it looks more like a gradual ship, uh, change in size like that. Okay, so we did order. I just wanted to show you some other possible solutions for maybe tension or some other things that you can do. There will be another video after this one that will show you how you're gonna turn all of this in. So this could talk about tension because, it's a little bit of a tricky one, because there's um, points of tension I've made right here. See how they're close together? So uh, that's a really good uh, way to talk about possible congestion or increase, any of those words. And that goes back to the um, one of the five graphic design principles that I talked about with the reading that you had to do. So for just a couple of minutes, I wanted to play around with this so that you can see uh, the possible process of how you would go through and play around with these squares to try and talk about these five words that you're going to visually describe with just four black squares, which I know seems like a, a daunting task at first, but once you get into it, it shouldn't take too long and should become a little bit easier. Uh, don't overthink it, then you're just going to freeze and not be able to finish. Um, so if you take one that you've already done and just simply, let's say you're done with all of the word order, you've done all three of those that you need to do. Now you need to make three for the word playful. Just take what you already have and start rotating it, resizing it, overlapping it. So if I take this and just rotate that a little bit, and then um, rotate this up here, and then maybe have this one look like it's falling off, rotate it around. Um, that might start talking about the word playful a little bit. And then I can go over to this one. And even just simply rotating that makes it look less like it's got order to it so that it looks a little bit more chaotic and crazy like playful would. And we can even maybe resize that one. And remember with resize, you gotta hold the shift key down and do it from the corner. And I'll rotate this one too. Maybe have it way up here so that it looks like the squares are actually bouncing around and playing with each other. Just be experimental and play with it and have fun. The next video, I'm going to show you how to turn this in.